Good afternoon everyone, welcome to Our Small Footprint. My name is Nissa, and if you're new here, we are a family of eight who live off grid in Australia. Today's video is another kitchen video today. Uh, I'm still getting through things. I've been asked for a like what I eat, eat in a week type video so I've been trying to film every meal that we have as well and I will collate that all together for you for a video on the weekend maybe. Uh, so I've been trying to do that as well but today's video I was showing you some garlic knots that I made. This was just a yeasted dough. It was sort of a spur of the moment thing because we were having soup for dinner and uh, sourdough crackers. So sourdough crackers are a bit of a favorite here but they're a bit time consuming so I don't make them that often but I wanted to share because they are well worth the time and effort if you like crackers I suppose. Uh, I am also thinking I will do a bit of a FAQ video again uh, maybe in a week maybe next weekend so not this one coming the next one uh, because I'll also do I'll combine it with my planning video for groceries because that will be the weekend before I go and do my groceries so I might do a chat video where I do an FAQ as well as some of my planner stuff and planning so if you have any questions put them in below but I'll also I'll ask on Instagram and stuff and I'll make a note of questions to do for that as well and I'll answer as many as I can uh, within reason obviously and so yeah, so enjoy the video and I will see you again next time. Thanks everyone. I decided to make some garlic knots to have with soup for dinner. So we were having the lemon coconut creamy soup for dinner uh, and the kids had some sausage and potato soup, I think. They had a choice of whichever ones they wanted. So normally I would make some sort of bread to go with it, uh, whether it was a sourdough boule that I had started the day before or whatever. And I hadn't done anything, so I decided to do a yeast dough and I decided to try these garlic knots. There is a recipe on Cookie Doo. Uh, it basically appears to be like a pizza dough recipe with the garlic butter on the inside. So whilst I referenced that recipe, I basically used my pizza dough recipe a yeasted pizza dough recipe and made the dough like that so I just did my standard uh, I think it works out to be about 1.2 kilos of flour I just used plain flour for this uh, with um, 10 grams of yeast about 650 grams of water 100 grams of oil and a, hot, and a bit of salt and mix the dough up in the thermix for that uh, this the double size dough the 1.2 kilo it does mix in the thermix but the thermix doesn't like it too much so I probably should do it in the KitchenAid and I just forget sometimes how much the thermix doesn't really like that double size dough I could do half and half too mind you but it does need the yeasted doughs really well it makes them nice and smooth in a fairly quick time so it is kind of handy for that purpose so I did the dough and then I oiled a bowl and put it in the bowl and put the bowl aside to rise. Now because it's a yeasted dough and it's nice and warm here at the moment, it's only going to take an hour and a half, two hours maybe to get to double up. So that's what I was planning on. Uh, while I, while that was put aside, I did some garlic butter. So what I did was I used some of my smoked garlic paste that I had frozen and I blended it up with some ghee uh, and a bit of salt though it didn't need much because the smoked garlic paste originally had a bit of flavoring in it you could add fresh parsley I do have fresh parsley in the garden but I didn't go out and get any but you could add any sort of spice any sort of herbs you want some thyme some parsley some rosemary uh, anything you wanted really like it's it's very versatile I, I reckon you could make a sweet one of these too you could do some sort of like a hazelnut butter type thing or a cinnamon type one or anything like that I think this is a very versatile type recipe so I made up the uh, garlic butter in the thermomix as well and blended it all up so once I had those together I was rolling out the dough so it's quite hot which means that my doughs are quite sloppy even when they're well risen and that because they're proofed at a heat this is what happens so if it's hot and you're proving dough then it tends to get kind of lax it doesn't have a whole lot of structure to it which is why you do fridge retards for uh, dough that you're going to do into like a boule or whatever but I didn't want to worry about that with this particular recipe so I split the dough in half and I rolled out the half into a rectangle now because of the texture of the dough uh, the 
the recipe that I was looking at sort of did single layer strips rolled into knots and it just wasn't going to work for me with the texture of my filling and the texture of the dough. So what I did was I rolled it down to a really large rectangle and then I topped it with the topping so the the garlic butter paste type thing and then I folded it in half towards me so the filling was inside the, the dough and I had that double layer to work with uh, it meant that I wasn't handling the filling either as much though you know it does sort of weep out but it worked better for this style dough and filling that I was doing uh, I think I'd very much like to try this with sourdough when I tend to use yeast doughs I tend to remember how much I prefer the texture and the mouthfeel of a sourdough these were very nice but they are a very soft dough like a cakey almost compared to sourdough but anyway I so I rolled it in half and then I cut it into strips. So I just measured it out and did sort of even one inch wide strips, I suppose, 25 mil strips. Uh, and then I knotted those. So again, the dough was a little bit lax. It's warm. There's lots of filling because I put plenty of filling in it. Uh, so I was just trying to get them into a standard sort of a knot shape to put in the tray. I ended up putting uh, 12, oh, sorry, 12 knots per tray. So I did, um, 12 knots per half lot of dough is what I went for, I think. Or did I do 16? I did two trayfuls. I did knots in each tray. And I can't see the video while I'm telling you this, so I can't remember how many it was, but you'll be able to see on the screen. And so I knotted them and then I placed them into the tray evenly so that they could have their second rise. So I filled both trays full. I used a bit of baking paper because I was concerned about the butter leaking out and burning on the bottom of the pans because I use the, the barbecue so it's always hotter at the bottom of the pans I didn't want to burn it to the bottom of the pans and then have to try and clean it so I used some baking paper filled them and let them rise so I just covered them and left them to rise for as long as it took for them to all sort of puff up together in that tray uh, because there was garlic left in that bowl I decided to make some sourdough crackers now I make sourdough crackers very simply uh, I use a mix of spelt flour and white flour olive oil with starter and some herbs that's that's sort of it so uh, I'll try and put the ratios down in the in the show notes but uh, it's a very simple cracker dough and we really like it because we don't use dairy I don't want to use ghee in this because it would be too high quantities for the for the price of it uh, so I use olive oil which at the moment is pretty expensive too mind you but I only pay $42 I think it is for six liters of olive oil versus uh, I think it's 41 maybe no 32 sorry for two liters of ghee so that's the you know the variance there uh, so I mix it all, I bring it all together into a dough. I use the Thermomix because I had that garlic le butter left in the bowl. So I thought, well, that would be a nice flavor in the crackers. So I made the cracker dough in the Thermomix and basically I just put all the ingredients in there and I bring it together like a dough, very much like a pa my pasta recipe. Uh, I then bring it together on the baking mat just to make sure it's all nice and amalgamated and then cover it in plastic or uh, tea towel or beeswax or whatever you want but cover it up so it doesn't get a skin and stick it in the fridge uh, you can leave it out on the bench for a little while before sticking it in the fridge to kick start the fermenting it can stay in the fridge for as long as you want really there's nothing in there that goes bad as such i wouldn't leave it there for more than a few days personally it tends to discolor slightly uh, i'm sure there's nothing in it that's gonna make you sick but sourdough starter after a while tends to discolor once it's taste once it's eaten all the sugars then it goes a bit brown and so your, your crackers end up a funny color uh, ask me how I know uh, so you can leave it in there for a couple of days but I was just doing it same day so it just went in the fridge long enough to harden up a little bit once it was chilled I pulled it out and then I like to use my pasta roller for my crackers because I like them to be really uniform and really thin uh, so I pulled that out but this is I got this brand new cutter from the mix shop the thermomix shop uh, and it you roll it and it cuts your crackers into triangles which is really cool because normally I hand cut them and they're all uneven and you know it's not as cool but I got this cracker roller so I was trying to figure out what would be the best way shape wise for the the dough to be for the cracker to be most useful so I did it in the pasta roller 
uh, and then laid it on the tray how I normally would. And then I would normally have used my wavy pasta cutter and just cut it into strips. But I used the roller this time, but the roller only fits one and a bit on those on that width strips so I wasn't sure whether that was the most efficient way of doing it or how that worked so I did it that way the first time and then what I decided to do was roll it out on the silicon mat myself and just roll it out to a big square on the silicon mat and see how that worked now a lot of effort to hand roll it out like that like turning and moving and getting it even and it was never going to be as even as it is in the pasta roller and things like that but I wanted to give it a go so I rolled it out onto the uh, silicon mat and then tried using the cutter with that. And it still ended up being like there was a half at the end of it anyway. So that didn't seem particularly more efficient at all, to be honest. Uh, so it worked, of course, but I didn't find that as useful. Now, I mustn't have recorded the next try that I did, but what I did was I rolled it out with the pasta roller like I had been doing, laid the strips on the silicon mat and then I cut it vertically instead of horizontally so I did it from me and away on the short side of the uh, silicon mat and that seemed to work really well I think it felt like that was a much better and efficient use of the cutter on the dough it definitely seemed to fit better so I really like this cutter it cut it nicely it had good perforations and it had the little docking bits in the middle to stop it from puffing too much and it worked really well I'm really happy with this so if I can put a link down below if you're interested in having a look they had a couple of different shapes uh, and as always with the the mix shop if you put my name in when you buy anything from there then I receive a small commission from it so be grateful for that if you decide to get something from there uh, once they're cut I spray it with some olive oil so I just use I have this decor uh, oil sprayer I actually just ordered one from the mix shop so I got a voucher for the mix shop which is why I bought the cutters and stuff like that and I bought the oil sprayer which I forgot that I had I want to try that as well but I have this decor one that's plastic the mixed one is glass so I want to give it a go but the plastic one works really well to spray the oil over the surface of the crackers and what you're just trying to do is create some moisture I have sprayed water on it before and that works fine too I've even sprayed some apple cider vinegar on it before thinking maybe that would add some flavor to it as well you just want to moisten the surface of it once it's moistened you sprinkle whatever you want to sprinkle on it so I used everything but the bagel seasoning that I had made and some flaked salt you can add these things into your crackers rather than on top and they will stick in the cracker better than they do when they're on top but if you're using the pasta roller putting something sharp like onion flakes or large like a seed means that as it's going through the pasta roller it tears the dough and it falls off so that's why I've done it on the top but I think that if I was going to roll them out by hand I'd probably put the seasonings on the inside because they do fall off like some stay on some don't so what I do is I tend to sprinkle it all on and then I get a piece of baking paper and I press the seeds and stuff into the dough gently it doesn't stick to the baking paper because it's not stick baking paper but also because of the oil that you sprayed so I just press them down slightly but when you go to break them you lose a lot of the seeds uh, and I normally just scoop them back up and use them on something else or sprinkle them on my tomatoes or something like that but at the same time it is a little bit of a waste uh, in that sense so I baked them I bake them at about 160 it's a sort of a low temperature because they cook fairly quickly and they go from not cooked to well done really fast so it takes about 15 to 20 minutes but you do have to watch them and they can burn easily and of course my general disclaimer I'm cooking on a barbecue so my heat is a little bit different so you really need to check your oven so do your first couple of batches and and then judge it from that point forward but I would say about 160 for about 15 to 20 minutes and they are done there's not much to them uh, we like to eat them with fresh tomato so in summer we eat them a lot more because or have fresh slicing tomatoes from the garden which uh, we absolutely adore picking slicing and eating even without crackers but with crackers is nice too the kids uh, like to eat them just straight they will just raid a jar and eat them straight up uh, they're nice with pesto nice with some cashew cheese the kids eat them with hummus uh, they get eaten it is a lot of work for a fairly small amount of crackers like even in a I think this was like a triple batch of whatever the recipe was that I started with uh, that I used as my as my base for what I created uh, I think this was a triple batch of that so it doesn't go 
real far uh, for a family of eight in a cracker type situation. Crackers are one of those things that sometimes uh, would be better off bought for efficiency's sake. They're a bit like uh, rice crackers, like I buy rice crackers because there's no way that I'm going to make enough to make it worthwhile time-wise to be something that's worth making and there is a little bit of that like you know I make nearly everything from scratch and I try not to buy too much processed stuff and I try not to buy just too much in general because then you've got storage and whereas if you've got products like you've got flour to make you uh, crackers then you don't need to store anything else you've got olive oil already because you use that for many things you got flour you know that sort of stuff whereas if you're buying packets of something like a rice cracker then you have to buy well I buy 10 to buy 16 a week uh, 16 a week sorry 16 per six weekly period and then it gets tossed in a crate and the kids have them as snacks with hummus or uh, peanut butter or whatever they want on them so uh, the crackers are a little bit like that it's but I don't buy crackers anymore uh, I don't buy crackers for Daryl and I because realistically they're an unnecessary food uh, so generally speaking I, I make them a couple of times a month and we eat them and then that's what occurs uh, so whilst they are inefficient time versus cost wise and things like that they are very tasty and we thoroughly enjoy them when we make them we just don't make them as often so anyway bit of a ramble rant there but people are always interested in that sort of stuff so I'm trying to remember to share it uh, I'm trying to remember to discuss these things as well as think them because I sometimes get the questions in the in the comments asking me what I was thinking like what I would have said but I shortened things up that's the other thing too is I, I tend to condense the videos to try and keep them at sort of the 15 minute mark 12 to 15 minute mark because I've released them every day every second day and I don't think people need need or want to watch a 30 minute video uh, but it means that sometimes some of the things that I think about to say I, I sit there and go well it's unnecessary so we're you know trying to say more of that <laughs> anyway I will see you on the next video thank you very much for joining me again today bye guys